Top 10 Travel Destinations The Coliseum Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get started make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to my channel. Top 10 Travel Destinations The Coliseum So make sure to watch the full video. 10. The Pedestal of the Colossus of Nero Just opposite the Colosseum Metro Station, in front of the Colosseum is the Pedestal of the Colossus of Nero. Not much to see today, but an important piece to pass on on your way. You will see a plaque indicating, Area del Basamento del Colosio di Neron. The Nero Colossus is a massive structure measuring 106 including the base. 5 Roman feet, according to Pliny the Elder. That's about 99 feet, 30.3 meters, by today's measurements. It was built in the likeness of Nero, at least his face, until after his death it was transformed into that of the sun god Thor. You must imagine the statue is almost as tall as the Statue of Liberty, only about 10 feet shorter. Built and built without using any of the machinery that was used to build our Statue of Liberty at the end of the Industrial Revolution. A good example is that after Nero's death, the statue was moved outside the Colosseum and ancient writers say it took around 40 elephants to transport the building. It was last mentioned in history at the end of the 4th century before disappearing into thin air. All we have today is a part of the base with trees growing on it. A great place to unload and enjoy the shade. 9. Arch of Constantine Flavius Valerius Constantinus, or for most of us, Constantine the Great, was the first Christian emperor of Rome. A triumphal arch commemorates his victory over Maxentius at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge in 312 AD. It's an epic archway, right in front of the Colosseum. It sits in Piazza del Colosseo, next to the huge amphitheater, and it took around two years to build, a record pace. The architect took some creative liberties. Borrowing statues from nearby arches, temples, and buildings to adorn the Arch of Constantine. This is the largest Roman arch and one of only three remaining in Rome. In the 4th century AD, there were 36 triumphal arches. Only three of them survived. 8. The Outer Ring as you approach the Colosseum, the first thing you will notice is that it has several rings that support the seats. When you exit the subway, the rest of the outer ring faces you and you can see through the building. Three sets of arches are stacked on top of each other to form an outer ring 159 feet high. When they finished the Colosseum, the ring went around the whole structure, but after a thousand years without restoration or attention, it collapsed in the earthquake of 1349. The outer ring has 80 arches, each with a number. Spectators are assigned an arc number to guide them to their seats. This is a very efficient process, filling and emptying the building in approximately 15 minutes. There are 76 numbered entrances for public use. The other four doors have different purposes and are not numbered. Gladiators have two entrances. The Libertinarian Gate, between number 57 and number 58, is the dead gladiator. Between numbers 19 and 20 is where the gladiators entered the building, sometimes called the Gate of Life. The Roman magistrate entered between gates 38 and 39, which can still be seen today. The emperor, vestal virgins, and senators will enter between gate 76 and gate 1, this gate is now the Colosseum exit. 7. Ludus Magnus. Opposite the Colosseum in Via di San Giovanni in Laterano are the remains of Ludus Magnus, the nearest and largest school of empire gladiator training. There were many slave cells and there was even an underground tunnel directly connected to the Colosseum. Ludus was built by Emperor Domitian. Right after the Colosseum was completed in 82 AD, with a soft opening in 80 AD, they must have realized that there was something wrong with the large aircraft supply chain. The battle, so Domitian decided to fix it himself. The school has been renovated and improved but has been more or less in use for over 200 years. Gladiators came from all over the empire and were trained as freemen or slaves at the Harvard Gladiator School, Ludus Magnus. The word road terrain can also be used to refer to competitions and training. Once in Ludus, your main skill will be chosen and you will be trained by the Lanista. The word gladiator refers to a special type of fighter who fought with a short sword called a gladiator. It was popularized by the movie, Gladiator, starring Russell Crowe, which is probably the best movie ever made. 6. Centro Storico in the Spanish Steps This is the Centro Storico, the historic center of Rome, with so many art-filled churches, resplendent palaces. 
and lively squares that you could spend your whole vacation strolling its ancient streets and lanes. Spend some time just to absorb the neighborhood's atmosphere instead of going from one of its must-see sites to the next. Along with Piazza Navona, the Trevi Fountain, and the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore, stop in less well-known churches, such as Santa Maria del Popolo, where you'll find works by Bernini and Caravaggio. Pause at the Spanish steps, the flight of irregular stairs and landings that lead up to the French Church of Trinita dei Monti. The stairs take their name from Piazza di Spagna, the plaza at their base and one of Rome's most typical squares. The stairs have long been a favorite haunt of tourists. The boat-shaped fountain at the foot of the Spanish steps is known as the Barcaccia and was created by Pietro Bernini, father of the great Baroque architect Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Via Condotti, leading southwest from Piazza di Spagna is Rome's most fashionable shopping street, where the Café Greco is famous for the artists, writers, and musicians who have frequented it. 5. Death's Gate. No Colosseum is complete without passing through the Death's Gate, or more formally, the Libitinaire Gate journey. As mentioned above, this is where the dead, beaten, and bloodied leave the Colosseum. The word comes from Libitinarius, which means, undertaker, in Latin. This is another exclusive area, so be sure to visit one of our limited access Colosseum tours. If the description says it includes the arena floor, you will be able to walk through the gates of this legend. Now you can understand why this is one of the main attractions to see in the Colosseum. 4. The Floor of the Arena, Special Access. The Floor of the Ancient Roman Arena. The word arena means sand, and Colosseum is the origin of the word. They will say, on stage, about the sand that covers the stage. We now use the word to refer to an entire stadium, like a basketball court. The tunnel frame supports the floor of the Colosseum and the stone walls support the wooden floor. There are 36 trapdoors, and all kinds of hells are released from people standing on the stage. Today we have zoos and photos online that make it easy to identify almost any animal. In the first century AD, they could only recognize animals that they had seen with their own eyes. It was often the first time they saw these exotic animals, starved, beaten, and unleashed on trained warriors. In my opinion, this is one of the best things to see in the Colosseum. You cannot enter this area with general admission, but we have guides to take you to the arena floor. 3. The Underground, Hypogeum. Beneath the Colosseum is an intricate maze of tunnels, once used by gladiators and event organizers. This is by far the hot topic that tourists want to hear, even before opening the region to tours. This is indeed one of the iconic features of the Colosseum. What other stadium or arena has trapdoors that fighters or animals can lift or jump? The basement or hypogeum is a very complex area. It has up to 36 hatches and areas to store entertainment for the entire show. Without a doubt, this is the most exclusive area of the Colosseum. General admission won't get you there, but we have an underground Colosseum tour to get you there. 2. Craft Food Stand, Second Floor. Look for the elevator on the second floor of the Colosseum. You'll find some cool artifacts that were once used in the building, including cups and spoons. Many people are surprised that ancient peoples were so advanced, but that is part of human culture. You have to feed a crowd. If you're a seller, this can be a great way to earn money. We can speculate what they ate, or we can trust the ancient Roman writers. During archaeological excavations, shells of oysters or walnuts were found near the site. As a general rule, the Romans ate a lot of fruit, such as plums, figs, grapes, pears, almonds, and of course chestnuts. The Romans regularly drank various types of alcoholic beverages, most of which were obtained from grapes in the form of wine. Calda is a popular winter drink, a hot distilled spirit with spices very similar to mulled wine. Posca is a vinegar-based drink drunk by farmers. Nobles often drank wine mixed with water. You will most likely also find all kinds of meat on the stalls, whether chicken, lamb, pork, or various fish such as Tiber catfish. 1. Second Floor Balcony. Exit the concession area, look at the center of the Colosseum, and walk clockwise. When you get to the top of the oval you will find a large balcony where you can take pictures. Look to the bottom right and you'll see recreations of some of the original seats in the Colosseum. Colosseum ranks are organized by class and social status, which is a birthright. The emperor is of course seated on the first floor, and he has his podium, as in, gladiator.
At the same level sit the Vestal Virgins, the Senators, and the Magistrates. Riders or Cavaliers sit on the second floor. They belong to a social class similar to that of Senators but were military. These people are sitting around the balcony on the second floor, where you are now. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to our channel before you go.